So this is me putting the new engine in with the components and I sped this way up. I think this is 45 minutes of me going up and down and down and up and over and back, moving the car this way, moving the engine, tilting back and forth. And I finally got it in. There are two engine mounts and five or seven bolts, something like that, to hold the engine to the transmission housing. Just going back and forth. If you get, if you do this, try to get a friend to help you. Um, the friend could be doing the lift while you are moving the engine around. You have your hands on the engine carefully, not anywhere they're going to get pinched. But it it is ridiculous because it 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 should have taken me about eight ten minutes, and it took me forty five minutes. There there you see me lifting one side of the engine up. And, and getting bolts in just barely getting a few threads in and then tightening it and then lowering the engine and getting a few more so and now we're back to the GoPro on top here's the new engine in uh, and I'm slowly uh, connecting uh, more things I think I'm tightening the bell housing putting in the other bolts the bell housing to the engine and getting ready to put the headers in I gotta put those bolt those headers in and use the uh, exhaust gaskets I have to use the old gaskets some some point I'm gonna get new gaskets I l could not find gaskets to fit this weird plate maybe some of you can tell me what that plate is um, you saw pictures of it earlier those two plates on the side of the engine the bolt pattern is different for the gasket the gaskets are different um, so anyway I'm continuing this. I've got black tape over the uh, intake manifold and uh, slowly reassembling things uh, the way they came. It's not as difficult as you think, but it's definitely about three or four times longer to put something in as it is to take something out. That was the oil pressure hose. Now I'm cutting all of the uh, exhaust manifold bolts they were all about an eighth of an inch too long initially so I'm cutting them all off there are 14 of them I'm over at the grinder and I'm rounding the ends and smoothing them the the r rough cut off that I did I could have done this in the metal cutting bandsaw uh, that is cut them off but it seemed faster just to use a an abrasive cut off wheel there you can see the gaskets that I'm reusing, which I probably shouldn't. I should probably, and it, it wouldn't be too hard to put new gaskets in to unbolt the headers and slip new ones in in the future if I have leaks. They seem to be okay. I'm using kind of an exhaust sealant on either side of the gasket, a very thin, and bolting them all in. Oh, and I do use never seize the gray never seize paste on the intake bolts or the the exhaust bolts rather especially not the intakes but the exhaust. Uh, I've dealt with a lot of rusty fasteners and uh, there I am standing. You can see I'm actually this is how much room there is in the engine bay. I'm actually at one point almost standing next to the engine. So this engine is hardly shoehorned. You can see there's a lot of room around this engine. It's hardly been shoehorned in here. A V8s, these small box seem awfully small to me. Now I'm under the engine, hooking the fuel pump back up, using this braided fuel line that I got from Summit or Jegs. I can't remember, but it's an it's got a like a plastic tubing on the inside as opposed to a nitrile rubber and it's supposed to be much more resistant to uh, fuel that has additives in it things in it so and it's braided so I've been using that instead I think it's a 3 8 line I don't think it's quarter inch I'm starting to bolt things back together here from underneath the, the exhaust flanges are going back on some of the exhaust header bolts are, I think were a little easier to get to this strap is coming off that I welded to the car. It wasn't welded to the transmission. It was just welded, just holding the trans up when the engine was gone. 
and now I uh, I spray painted where I had welded it. That worked that worked pretty well. It didn't really take me that long to to fabricate that strap and put it in. The quadrajet's going back in, uh, or has gone back in. Now the wiring is being reattached. Pretty easy to do. I think there are six or eight wires connecting everything up. Very simple. Simple. That was the f the uh, linkage to the carb throttle linkage. You can see there's a shaft there on the left. This is this funnel that I bought uh, from Eric the Car Guy's recommendation, and it's a great funnel because it sits on top, and while your your coolant is is burping and gurgling, it just sits there and is always feeding the right amount of coolant in to the engine. I think it was $25, $29 comes with all these adapters and it seems like a real must-have especially when you're starting out and your whole coolant system is empty and there's a lot of air in there for it to burp. So now it's going up in the air for a while. Oh, probably when I was working on it before. Coming back down again. Valve covers. These groovy aluminum valve covers just seem like a must to me. Putting the oil in. And I think I may have put a zinc engine break-in additive in with it also. I have to look and see what I did. Um, oil is going in. And I, I left the other valve cover off. Because what I wanted to do is crank the engine. Crank it and crank it and crank it with a screwdriver on a drill until I could see oil coming up to the top of the rocker arms. That never happened, um, but I did crank it a lot. Here's the, the uh, distributor going back in and me figuring out how to route all the wires. I remember, and it's still to this day, it's always difficult for me to bend over a car for hours at a time. At the end of the day, my back is killing me. And this is no exception. I can see why those those guys get those uh, mechanics things where you can kind of lay on them. 